Hi guys, welcome back. So today we've got another video where we're going to be creating this uh, blog layout. Um, you can see here I've used uh, CSS Grid to get this kind of image gallery uh, going. Um, using CSS Grid you can see I've got an image here which spans two rows and this image here is spanning two columns. Um, it's also mobile friendly so if we adjust the screen size you'll see when we get to 700 pixels it um, splits into two columns and then if you go further for a mobile device it just goes into one column. Um, when I reload the page, we get this kind of load animation. That's all done with vanilla JavaScript. Um, just show you that on a bigger screen. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We have this sidebar here where we've rotated the text as well. So I'll be showing you how to do that with CSS. But yeah, any questions, guys, leave me a comment or a message. And yeah, let's get going. Thanks. Okay, guys, so to get started with this project, you can see I've just got the three usual files, the index.html, the style.css, and app.js. Um, I have an image folder here as well where I've just sourced five, uh, sorry, six images from unsplash.com. Um, and I also also have this uh, web font called Oaks Grotesque Lite, which I downloaded online. This is a paid font, so um, use any Google font you want, really. You don't want to pay for any fonts. But um, yeah, I'm going to be using this for this project. Um, so let's get going. Um, I'm just going to kind of try index that HTML file and then get a boilerplate up and running. And then in the uh, title, I'm just going to say... Um, image blog or photo blog, whatever you want to call it. And in the head section, we'll just link to our style.css like so. And then we'll come to the bottom of our body and we'll just do a script tag with a source and we'll just say app.js like so. Okay. So um, if we come into our body section next as well, next thing I'm going to do is just. Um, create a sidebar div, okay? So we'll say dot sidebar, like so. And then within this sidebar div, we're going to have a menu toggle. So we'll say dot menu hyphen toggle. This is going to be like our hamburger menu. So in here, we're going to use free span elements to create our hamburger logo. Let's copy that twice down. And then after this, um, we're going to say H2. And I'll just put blog in here for now. And then underneath this blog header, we're going to say, um, create another div called socials. And this is going to contain our social media links. We're going to have an unordered list in here. And then an li element for list element. And then within this first list element, we're going to add an anchor tag. And then we're going to just say Facebook in here. This will be our Facebook link. If we uh, copy this list element down twice. And then I'm just going to add uh, Instagram. And then we'll just say Twitter in the in the third one. <clears throat> okay, so next, uh, I think that's pretty much it, actually, for our sidebar. So kind of underneath that, we're going to say, hey, we want to, another deal with a class of image grid. And then within this image div, uh, grid, we're going to have another div with a class of overlay. Um, and this is this uh, overlay div is just going to be used to apply kind of a bluey tinge to our photos, which the uh, image grid contains. And then I'm going to have five, uh, six images in this uh, grid container. So we'll say dot image. And I'm just going to copy this down five times. One, two, three, four, five. And then for each image, I'm going to separately label them in terms of their number. So I'll just say one for the first div, two for the second, three, say four, five, and six, like so. And then I'm just going to apply some CSS uh, grid um, classes as well. So I'm just going to say for the first image one, we're going to give this a class of vertical. Uh, for image five, I'm going to also give that a class of vertical. And then for image six, we're going to say horizontal. Okay, and then as I said, this is just for our uh, CSS grid layout in our CSS. Let's open this in live server, see what that looks like. Okay, so not that interested at the moment. Let's just uh, make this smaller. Okay, so that's pretty much it for our HTML. If we go into our CSS now, style.css, um, I'm just going to first import this, um, this font. So remember in our web fonts folder, we have this CSS file, okay? Um, so I'm just going to import that into our main.style.css file. So we just say here, at import, and I'm using the URL, um, and we're just linking to that web fonts folder, and we're taking that CSS file, okay? 
So kind of underneath this, next one I'll do is just do the global settings. So we'll say star, and then we'll say margin zero, padding zero, box sizing of border box. Okay, and you can see all of our default uh, padding has been removed and the text is at the edge of the screen. Um, I'm also just going to bring in that, uh, use that font for everything in this uh, document, okay? So I'm just gonna say font family here, um, Oaks Grotesque Light, and I'm just giving it a letter space of two pixels. So now you can see that font's been applied and we have the slight gap between each letter due to this letter spacing. Okay, so kind of underneath here, next thing we're gonna do is set our HTML and our body. And I wanna give the HTML and body a width of 100 viewport widths, so VW. And then we're going to say, so that viewport width, that just fills the screen horizontally, okay, um, 100%. And then we're going to say background color, and we're going to say here, I just wanna give it a background color of black, okay? Now underneath this, we're gonna next select our anchor tags. We're gonna give them a color of white, just say white for now. And then we'll say text decoration of none, and that will remove the uh, underline. And then I just want to give these a font size of 0.8 rem just to make the text slightly smaller, like so, okay? And then come underneath this, the next thing we want to do is select our sidebar. So dot sidebar. And here, go and say position fixed. And then we're going to say to uh, top of zero. And then I want to give this uh, left of zero as well, just to, so it starts at the top left hand side of the screen. And then we're going to say a height of 100 VH for 100 viewport heights to fill the screen uh, vertically. And we're going to give this a width of 10%, like so. And also just a color of white as well. And that will just make our blog text white as well uh, with our links. So just to show you how this uh, looks, if we just give this a background color of red for now, you can see there's our sidebar, okay? So it's vertically um, fills the screen 100% and 10% of the screen horizontally, okay? So we'll just uh, delete that. Next we wanna do, come underneath this, we're going to next select our menu toggle, okay? So if we say dot menu hyphen toggle, and here we're going to say position, Absolute, okay, because I want to position this absolute to the sidebar. And then we're going to say here, top 25 pixels. Okay, and then left 50%. And then we're going to transform, translate on the x-axis minus 50% to center it uh, horizontally with the sidebar. Uh, we're going to give this a width of 40 pixels and a height of 25 pixels. And then kind of underneath this, we're going to display this with Flexbox. Okay, and then we're going to say Flex Direction uh, Column, okay? And what it's do, this menu toggle, you remember, it houses the, the three span elements, okay? So we're using this display flex in column just to display these spans underneath each other in a column, okay? That's what we're doing uh, this Flex Direction Column for. And then we're going to say justify content and we're going to say space between. And that will just space out each of the span elements evenly, vertically, okay? Um, so come underneath this, next we want to do is select our menu toggle span elements. So we'll say dot menu toggle span, like so. And then we're going to say here, I uh, want to say width of 100%. Okay, so as it's 100% of the parent, that will be a width of uh, 40 pixels, okay, which we stated here. And then we're going to say uh, uh, height of three pixels. And then we'll give this a background color of white. Okay, so you can, can't make, it's hard to make out at the moment, but you see the uh, menu toggle there appear above our text, the free span elements, okay? So kind of underneath that, next thing we wanna do here Actually, I'll just say a uh, cursor pointer on here. So you can see when we hover the, the uh, menu toggle, let's just put that in the menu toggle div, like so, up here. Now you can see when we hover, we get our uh, cursor pointer, like so. Okay, so next thing we wanna do, underneath this uh, menu toggle span, we're going to say dot sidebar. And next thing we wanna do is select our uh, H2. So we'll say dot sidebar, H2, like so. 
And here we want to position this absolute again. And then we're going to say top 18% from the top of the screen, like so. And then we're going to say left 50%, uh, font size of 1.2 rem to make it a bit smaller. And then we'll come underneath that and we'll say transform origin, okay? So transform origin of zero, zero. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to rotate this text, okay? And we're using zero, zero to rotate it from the top left-hand side. So zero, the zero, zero coordinate of the element, okay? So kind of underneath this, we're going to say transform, uh, rotate, and we're going to say minus 90 degrees, like so. And then if we save that, you can see now our blog text has been uh, rotated 90 degrees. So it's pointed up vertically. Um, and then also, I just want to come under, after this rotate, and we're going to say translate. And here we want to say on the Y axis, okay? We're going to say minus 50%. And that will just center it horizontally with the um, sidebar. And we're using the Y axis um, for, the, for the horizontal because remember we've rotated this. So it's um, treating the uh, Y axis as the horizontal in this case for our, for our view, okay? So kind of underneath this, underneath the sidebar H2, we're next going to select the socials div, say so dot socials. And then here we'll say again position absolute. And we'll position that um, to the bottom of the sidebar. So we'll say um, bottom zero. Um, we'll give this a width of 350 pixels. Okay, so you can see our socials have gone to the bottom now. Um, and we'll say left 50%, like so. And then we'll say um, transform origin again. Okay, again, we'll say zero, zero, because we're going to rotate it. And here we'll just say uh, transform. We're going to say rotate, again, minus 90 deg, like so. And then also what we want to do here is just do a translate wire, okay? Translate wire, and again, minus 50%, like so. Okay, so now what we want to do is get these um, aligned next to each other, okay? Not uh, underneath each other. So here, we're going to come underneath the socials, we'll say dot socials ul final the list and here again we're going to do display flex this time you can see now they've gone next to each other and then underneath this we're going to say justify content and this time we're going to do space around okay so this will uh, space out the elements uh, evenly and it will just uh, add a bit of space to the edge of the uh, first and final elements as well and then we're just going to take off those uh, list bullet points we'll say list style with none like so okay and that's pretty much it for our sidebar, guys. Now let's move on to the um, the actual image grid, okay? So we're gonna come underneath this, we'll say dot image grid, like so. And here, we're just going to say position relative. Okay, and then we'll say here, um, left of 10%. And we're doing this left of 10% because our sidebar is actually feels 10% of the screen. So that's why we're starting our image grid left of 10%. percent going to give us a width of 90% to fill, the remain, to fill the remainder of the screen. And then we're also going to say a height of 100 viewport heights to fill the screen vertically. And then we'll say here display grid because we're going to be using CSS grid for this. And then we're also going to come underneath this next and say uh, grid template columns. And we're going to do the repeat function here. We're going to repeat this three times of one fraction unit, okay? And th what this will do, this will basically get our grid and it will split it into three even columns, okay? So we have like nice even space in between each column and we that's what this fraction unit is. And then underneath that, we're going to set to our grid template rows. And again, we're going to do the same thing. So we say repeat. Um, and we'll say free one fraction unit again. Okay, so we've got nice, we've got a nice even three columns and three rows. Okay, so now underneath this, we're going to say, I want to give this a gap. Okay, so we'll say gap of a 0.2 rem. And that would just apply a small gap between each image in our grid. Now underneath this, uh, next we want to do is select our overlay, like so. 
And what this will do, this will just, as I said before, this will apply like a blue tinge to our to our images, okay? So what we want to do here is just position this absolute to take it out of the, um, the flow of the document, okay? So we can position it wherever we want. And that won't have any bearing on the uh, grid uh, container then because we position this absolute, so the grid won't affect this div. And then we're going to say here Z index of two, just to position this in front of each image. And then we're going to say top, zero, left, zero, right, zero, and bottom, zero. And then I'm just going to give copy this uh, background color over, okay? So this is just a, a kind of see-through blue. You can see here, I've just selected this blue color and I've just dropped the opacity right down here, okay? Just choose whatever color you want for this, really, whatever looks good. Okay, so you can see our slight blue tinge there. And then next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to say pointer events of none. So this will allow us to hover our images and we can just click through this div, okay? Um, next thing we want to do here is select each image element. Or actually, what I'm going to do first is just get our images in place. So if we just, um, I'll copy this over for now. So what I've done here is I've just selected each of our individual divs, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've just uh, applied the background image using the URL pointing to the the first, second, and third images in my images folder. So I save that. You can see there's our images appeared there. Okay, they don't look great at the moment because we need to just apply the uh, size into them and the CSS grid layout. And just to show you this, that's what that blue tinge does. Okay, so and I'm going to uh, make these images grayscale as well. So you'll see that shortly. Okay, but now kind of underneath this, uh, above this, sorry. Uh, let's just uh, go to our image next. Say so dot image, like so. I'm going to position this these images relative, okay, and then I'm going to say uh, background size. I'm going to say background size of cover here, okay. So that just kind of adjusts the size to uh, to fit the um, the pet the actual uh, image div element, okay, and then underneath this we're going to say um, background position. of center, like so. Okay, and then also, I'm just going to do a filter grayscale. And this will make the images gray. So I'll just say 100%. Okay, so we get some nice black and white images there. And then, that's pretty much it. Now what I want to do is we're just going to say, underneath this, I'm gonna say dot vertical, okay? And what this will do here, we're going to say for vertical, we wanna say grid row, and here we're just going to say span two. Okay, and what that does, so we applied this vertical class to the uh, first uh, element. You remember if we go to our index.html, remember image one, we had this vertical class. And what this span two does, this will make this just means span two rows. Okay, so you can see now this image is spanning the two rows of our grid. Okay, so if we just do the same thing with horizontal as well. So we'll say, and that will just affect this uh, image down here. So remember, we want to span this now across two two uh, columns. So here we'll say dot horizontal, and here we'll just say grid uh, column, and we'll just say span two again. Okay. So that's how our divs look at my. You can see we have the grid, the small grid gap between them as well. Okay, and I think it, it just, um, that blue tinge does, does make it look a lot better. I mean, I'll take it off again. It just looks a bit bland with that, I think, if we, uh, but it's just down to personal preference. I kind of like that. Okay, um, so we're nearly done with our CSS. I just want to make this mobile friendly now, okay? So let's just, um, I'm just going to copy this over to save time. So what I've done here, we've got the media media only screen and max width of 700 pixels, okay? So when our screen reaches 700 pixels in the width, um, basically we're, we're selecting our image grid and then we're just applying, we're just adjusting the grid template columns and the grid template rows, okay? So when we reach 700 pixels, it's going to go to two columns of one fraction unit and we're just adjusting the rows to four, to four rows, okay? So if I save that, You'll see now, if we move our screen to 700 pixels, it should split into two rows. And there you go. Okay, so it just makes it look a bit better. And then let's just do a mobile friendly version as well. Okay, so if we 
come underneath this. Um, oh, you can see with that as well, with the horizontal, I've just uh, made it span. I've just taken out the horizontal um, the horizontal functionality. Okay, I'm just making it span one div now, so there's no kind of horizontal um, images. And then I've also just done a media screen and max width for 500 pixels. And here I'm just adjusting the sidebar size to 15% to make it a bit bigger, to make it so it's more readable on a mobile phone. Um, and yeah, Z index of 10, just to make it appear in front of everything and giving it a background color of black. And then the image grid, um, I'm just having one column now, okay? So the grid template columns, I'm just saying repeat one, uh, one fraction unit. And for the rows, I'm just doing repeat six, one fraction unit, okay? Because we can't really apply these vertical and horizontal classes um, in a mobile format. And so you can see here, I've just adjusted the grid row as well, just to fill out one row maximum. Okay, so if I go smaller than this now, you can see that's how it looks. Okay, so that's pretty much it for our CSS guys. Um, I'm just gonna just apply a few effects with JavaScript as well, just for this tutorial. So if we just come into our app.js file, um, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to say let images equal array dot from, and we'll just say document dot query selector all. I'm just going to select all of our images. So we'll say dot image in there. So now if I console dot log images, come to our console in the browser, and you can see we have an array of all of our images here, okay? So now what I wanna do with these images is just apply an effect when our DOM content gets loaded. So I'm going to say window dot add event listener, and we're going to listen up for the DOM uh, content, make that capital C. loaded and here we're going to set off this function okay so i'm just going to do an arrow function here passing the event i'm just saying images and we're going to do a for each on our image array okay and that's going to take in the image as well as the index of the image okay and then here we're going to do an arrow function and we're going to say set timeout and that's going to take in another function and here we're just going to say image dot class list dot add and we're going to say active like so okay um, and then also with the timeout so after this I'm just going to say idx times 100 okay so what this is doing this image is for each is taking each each image okay so it's looping over the images array and it's passing in each image and then it's applying a timeout function to each image okay so, and it's gonna apply this active class. And what this for each does, it also passes in the index, okay? So the first image will have the index of zero, the second image will have the index of one, and it's just applying this time. So zero times one, um, zero times 100, that's zero, one times 100, that's 100 milliseconds, and it's just applying this slight delay to each class, okay? So it's applying this active class with a slight delay for the last item in the image. Okay, so if we now come back to our CSS, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say, if we come to our image in the main part of our CSS, so dot image, um, I'm just going to say here, um, opacity of zero for now, okay? And then underneath this, I'm going to say dot um, image dot active, okay? And then we're going to set the opacity to one, and I'm going to do a transition of 0.5 seconds okay so now if we refresh you can see we get that slight delay with our image loading okay so if i just come out make that bigger okay so that's just how you apply that kind of animated loading effect for your images okay so that's i'm gonna wrap this up now guys that's just how you make a kind of basic image gallery with css grid uh, it's kind of like a blog blog layout but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, any questions, give me a comment and yeah, see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.